understanding. In general appearance, the Cocker Spaniel has a sturdy, compact body and a cleanly chiseled and refined head. The ideal Cocker is in complete balance, standing well up at the shoulder on straight forelegs. He is a dog capable of considerable speed combined with great endurance. But most of all, he should be sound well balanced throughout, free and merry, and show a keen inclination to work. A dog well balanced in all parts is more desirable than a dog with strongly contrasting good points and faults. Balance, soundness, and stability are the key points in your study of the Cocker Spaniel. The Cogger is the smallest of the sporting breeds. Dogs should stand 15 inches at the withers, bitches 14 inches. Animals more than half an inch below these measurements should be penalized. Any animal that is more than half an inch above these measurements is to be disqualified. In proportion, the measurement from the breastbone to the back of thigh is slightly longer than the measurement from the highest point of withers to the ground. The body must be of sufficient length to permit a straight and free stride. However, the dog never appears long and low. He should be well up on leg. Let's begin our detailed examination of the Cocker Spaniel with the head. The head should be in proportion with the rest of the body. The bony structure beneath the eyes is well chiseled with no prominence of the cheeks. The skull is rounded, but not exaggerated, and with no suggestion of flatness. See how the eyebrows are clearly defined. There is a pronounced stop. The muzzle is broad and deep, with square, even jaws. The distance from the stop to the tip of the nose should be one-half the distance from the stop up over the crown to the base of the skull. What about this dog's head? The muzzle appears down-faced, and the skull lacks roundness. Here, the muzzle is not of sufficient length and depth. He will not have sufficient strength to grasp and carry game birds. This head is correctly proportioned and shaped, with a moderately rounded skull, deep muzzle, and pronounced stop. Note again the distinctive chiseling. From the front, you can see that the width of the muzzle is about equal to the width of the crown of the skull. See how the upper lip is full and of sufficient depth to cover the lower jaw. Here, the back skull is too wide and the muzzle should be broader. This head is too heavy and overdone. The nose is black in color for black and black and tan dogs. In other coat colors, it may be brown, liver, or black. But in all cases, the darker the color, the better. The nostrils are well developed for scenting ability. Teeth are strong and sound and should meet in a scissors bite. Note that tiny toy-like teeth, which sometimes appear, should be penalized. Correct eye shape and placement is an important component of the typical cocker expression. The eyeballs are round and full and look directly forward. You can see that the shape of the eye rims gives the eye a slightly almond-shaped appearance. In color, the eye should be dark brown. In general, the darker, the better. However, in liver, and liver and white dogs, a lighter eye is acceptable. The pigmentation of the eye rims should harmonize with that of the nose. 
These eye rims are sagging. Eyes that are too large and round or too small and narrow should also be faulted. These eyes are correctly shaped, placed and colored. See how they help create the intelligent, alert, soft expression so characteristic of the cocker. Ears are lobular and are long and well feathered. They should be of fine leather. Correct placement is such that the top of the ear is on a line no higher than the lower part of the eye. Proper length should allow the ear leather to reach the end of the nose when brought forward. But remember that correct ear placement and fine leather are more important than length. These ears are set too high. Ears that have leather which is too thick with heavy cartilage should also be faulted. Thick ear leather will cause the ears to protrude and appear high set and they will not hang properly. Here again is a lovely head overall with its beautiful dark expressive eyes enhanced by a deep square muzzle and framed by long low set silky ears. The correct cocker head is a thing of beauty. Now let's consider the Cocker Spaniel's neck and body. The neck is sufficiently long to allow the nose to reach the ground easily to retrieve game. It should be muscular and free from excess skin or throatiness. See how it rises strongly from the shoulders and arches slightly as it tapers to join the head. The neck should blend smoothly into the shoulders, which are well laid back like these. They should form an angle with the upper arm of about 90 degrees. The shoulders should be clean cut and sloping. This dog is too straight in front. This is faulty as it hinders the dog's ability to cover ground efficiently and remain effective in the field. Also note that the neck is short due to the upright shoulders. This dog's correctly angulated shoulders form approximately a 90 degree angle with the upper arms, which permit the dog to move his forelegs in an easy manner with maximum forward reach. The shoulders should be well knit with minimal space between the tips of the blades, about the width of a man's thumb. See how a straight line dropped from the top of the shoulder blade to the ground just touches the back of the elbow. From the front, you can see the clean shoulder line with no hint of coarseness or heaviness. The chest is deep, reaching about to the elbows, which are held close to the body. It should be of sufficient width to allow plenty of room for heart and lung function. The forelegs are parallel, straight, and strongly boned. Here, there is a lack of depth of forechest. and a shallow brisket. From the side, see how the legs are set well under the dog, indicating good length of upper arm. Pasterns are short and strong. The feet are compact, large, round, and firm. The pads should be horny, not smooth or flat. Remember to examine the feet closely with your hands, since trimming or heavy furnishings can disguise the actual shape of the foot. Remember, too, that the feet should point straight ahead, not turn in or out. The Cocker Spaniel's body is short, compact, and firmly knit together, giving an overall impression of strength. The back is strong and slopes evenly and slightly downward from shoulders to set on of tail. Ribs are wide, well sprung and deep. A level top line which is parallel to the ground is not preferred. Equally undesirable is a top line that has an exaggerated slope. This correct top line slopes evenly but slightly toward the tail. The back is strong and hard with no sign of rumpiness. The croup is only slightly rounded, not flat or steep. 
The tail is set on as a continuation of the top line. The tail is docked, its length in proportion to the dog. It is generally carried on a level with the back, or slightly higher, not straight up like a terrier, and not so low as to indicate timidity. When the dog is in motion, the tail action is merry. Tail carriage in the show ring should always be natural. Spiking the tail, that is, pushing the tail unnaturally out of position, should be discouraged. Hind quarters should be angulated to balance the angulation of the front quarters, preserving the dog's symmetrical appearance. The thighs should be powerfully muscled. The stifles are strong with no slippage while standing or in motion. The hocks are strong and well let down. Correct angulation maintains the balanced outline and ensures good drive from behind. From the rear, you can see how the hips are wide and the hindquarters are well rounded and muscular. See how the hocks are well let down and parallel. Like the front feet, the rear feet are round, compact and large with horny pads. Now let's discuss the Cocker Spaniel's coat. It is of medium length on the body, with sufficient undercoat to provide protection from the elements. It is short and fine on the head. The ears, chest, abdomen, and legs are well feathered, but should never disguise the dog's natural outlines and movement. The Cocker Spaniel standard stresses the importance of correct coat texture. It should be silky and of a texture that allows easy care. It is flat or slightly wavy, but never cottony or excessively curly. It is improper coat texture more than the amount of coat that can cause grooming problems. A coat with good texture is relatively carefree. Excessive coat is a serious problem in the breed. What about this dog's coat? It is very cottony and much too excessive. An excessive coat not only obscures the dog's outline, but is completely unsuited for the breed's function as a sporting dog. This dog's coat is more correct. It does not hide the natural outlines, and its silky texture permits easy care. Judges should give equal consideration to a moderately coated dog as to competitors with more coat. Remember that dogs appearing in the show ring with excessive coats should be severely penalized. Trimming to enhance the dog's true lines should be done in a subtle manner and should appear as natural as possible, as this coat illustrates. The use of electric clippers on the back coat is not desirable. The Cocker Spaniel's coat color is classified into three varieties. Black, any solid color other than black or ascob, and party colored. Let's discuss each color category individually. The black coat should be jet black, like this. Shadings of brown or liver in the sheen of the coat are not desirable. A small amount of white on the chest and or throat is allowed, but a spot larger than a silver dollar or wider than a pencil-thin strip should be penalized. White appearing anywhere else on a black coat disqualifies. The black coat may also have tan points like these, Ascobs may also include tan points in some cases. For all colors in this category, the color should be of a uniform shade, although lighter shading on the feathering is permissible. A small amount of white on chest and or throat is allowed, but a spot larger than a silver dollar or wider than a pencil-thin strip should be penalized. Please take note that since white on buffs is less obvious, it is too often overlooked. 
white appearing elsewhere on the body is a disqualification. Party-colored coats consist of two or more definite, well-broken colors, one of which must be white. Again, tan points can appear in some cases and should be placed ideally like the tan points in blacks and ascobs. Roan coats, although quite rare in the breed, are considered party-colored. Whatever the coat colors in this category, one color which takes up 90% or more of the body is a disqualification. A word about tan points. The color of the tan may be from the lightest cream to the darkest red color, but in all cases should be restricted to 10% or less of the total body color. This dog's points are within this limitation. Tan markings in excess of 10% of the total body color is a disqualification. In the black and ASCOB varieties, the standard is quite specific about the placement of tan points. They should be located as follows. A clear tan spot over each eye, on the sides of the muzzle and on the cheeks, on the underside of the ears, on all feet and or legs, under the tail, and optionally on the chest. Tan markings that are not readily visible or that amount only to traces should be penalized, as should tan that extends upward over the muzzle and joins on top of the muzzle. In addition, the absence of any of the specified tan markings on an otherwise tan-pointed dog in the black and ASCOB variety is a disqualification. Although the smallest of sporting dogs, the Cocker Spaniel has a typical sporting dog gait. Prerequisite to good movement is balance between the front and rear assemblies. He is properly constructed in the shoulders, upper arms, and forelegs, so he can reach forward without constriction in a long, full stride to counterbalance the driving force from the strong, powerful rear quarters. Coming toward you, the forelegs should be carried straight forward, not out to the side. The legs will converge toward a center line, however, as speed increases. Going away, the rear legs follow in a straight line behind the forelegs, again with convergence toward a center line as speed increases. The hocks should remain strong with no looseness. This hindquarter movement appears too close. Here the front is loose. This dog is too steep in croup, and the tail is carried too high. Here the front reach is hampered due to straight shoulders. Here again is correct movement, coordinated, smooth, effortless. The cocker must cover ground efficiently, but excessive animation or speed should never be mistaken for proper movement. Speed is not required for a cocker to perform its normal duties in the field or show ring. Excessive speed in the show ring makes it difficult to evaluate movement properly. Therefore, Dogs should be moved at a moderate gait. Studying the cocker moving, or standing naturally, is more important than evaluating him posed. Finally, a word about temperament. The cocker spaniel is always happy, outgoing, and even-tempered. Shy, timid dogs, or those which display unwarranted suspicion of strangers, are not typical of the breed and should not be considered for top placements. As you continue to study the Cocker Spaniel, always keep in mind that he should be a sturdy, compact, intelligent dog 
who was bred, first and foremost, to be a sporting dog. An animal equally happy to be hard at work, eagerly at play, or contentedly at rest. <laughs>